in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. If we compare Europe to the United States, especially the treatment of Muslim minorities in Europe versus the United States, what we'll see is that European Muslims have it much worse than American Muslims across the board. There's far more discrimination, there's far more tolerance for discrimination in Europe than in the United States, and for that we should be, we're blessed. There's still room for improvement, and as a Muslim community, of course, we have to work uh, together to, and with our partners and outside our faith to, to continue to improve our standing. So when we look at the differences, though, there, there's a few differences that structure the Europe versus the United States, first of all, and then the nature of the European Muslim community against the American Muslim community. First of all, Europe has a much more strong tradition of secularism, what they refer to secularism in Europe than in the United States. Across the globe, when we, when we conduct studies in, outside the Muslim world, one of the, the most religious countries in the world is the United States. Over 90% of the population of Americans, about, eight, sorry, about 80 to 90% uh, 80 of the American population believe in the existence of God. For a quote unquote secular democracy, that's a huge number. You know, my colleagues write books about what makes America exceptional because it's not like Europe. So the, the tradition of multicultural respect for faiths in this country is tremendous and Muslims have benefited from this. And oftentimes in the 80s and 90s, you heard Muslims who immigrated from, uh, from the Muslim world will say, at least in this country, we could practice our faith. Because even in the Muslim countries, they were being denied that opportunity to practice their faith. Now, the, so that's the, the, the two kind of structural differences. Now, within the, if we look at the communities, the communities are also different. Uh, the problem in Europe today is that the average European, is, uh, average European family has 1.2 children. And you can't quantify 1.2 children, but one in a little bit, right? Which means there's not enough people in Europe to, to man the labor force. They need to import labor. So their strategy for bringing in labor is to target immigrants who need money, who don't desire staying in Europe, basically single men, to come in who can conduct manual, manual labor, right? Um, so by default, they are targeting a certain segment of the population, which is, is a skilled labor force, doesn't have very high education, can, can you know, to, to do the, the, the service labor, and hopefully send remittances, and then will go back to their home country. They'll come to work, they'll go back to their home country. So if you look at the average difference between the median income of a European family, and a non-Muslim European family, and a Muslim immigrant family in Europe, or a Muslim immigrant man, you'll see that there's about 10, 15 to 20 percentage point difference, with the European family earning much more than the immigrant. So the Muslim immigrant in Europe is, a poor, is basically part of the, 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 the underclass or the poor class in Europe. So they are seen as not only outsiders, but also, they, they, they suffer the, the dualism because they're the impoverished sector. Uh, really quickly, in, in the Muslim community in America, on all socioeconomic measures, the average Muslim in the United States is doing better than the average American. The, the average Muslim is better educated. The average Muslim is earning more money. The average Muslim is living in a bigger house than your mainstream population. So these are different communities. You have the brain drain from the Muslim world your doctors, your lawyers, your engineers, your professionals, and they're coming to the United States and they are succeeding.